Right, so we're uh, sort of halfway through the second day of, uh, of MOBILE Research 2011. Uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about sort of uh, the, the highlights, what you, what you found uh, so far, and particularly because you've been here two years ago. Two years ago. And uh, yeah. so if you could maybe say where you see the, the development since, uh, since your yeah, last... So, so I was here two years ago and uh, at the time there was, uh, the, the, there was a lot of um, enthusiasm about methodology but in the presentation there were also a lot of emphasis on the hurdles. So it was cost, it was technology, <coughs> it was uh, respondent uh, participation. So that was where all the, the, the presentations were about. And, now I feel like we moved on from that stage, so it comes up every now and then, but it's much more about uh, uh, how to implement the methodology, how to implement in, uh, it in a, a broader methodology framework with online, with offline. So I think we moved on from yeah. two years ago to where we are now, so that, that's a good part. Okay. What about you? And I think the highlights for me are really seeing um, how you know real work, you know, real examples of how mobile has been used. Um, seeing them how they fit into you know projects, and also seeing the different formats that people are using as well. I think it's interesting to see you know how people are using SMS to conduct uh, mobile research, you know, using the mobile web, and now apps are all coming into it as well. And actually seeing those real life examples come to life. Um, I think it was great seeing how um, Text Eagle actually use SMS um, in or in a, you know, to be able to get to um, research those at the bottom of the pyramid uh, within developing countries. Um, I, I really enjoyed the example um, that Nielsen were talking about, you know, um, showing how uh, mobile had been used to survey people at the World Cup um, in, in 2010. Um, a lot of the examples actually did show the uh sort of benefit of using mobile devices where people can text in, you can answer questionnaires, but you can add uh, photographs, you can, take, uh, you can take videos. Do you think that really is ultimately the, the sort of uh, unique selling point of, of using mobile uh, research, that you have that great variety of, of ways how you can collect the data? Well, I think, and I, I have to admit something here, I'm a firm believer of mobile research. But not necessarily of adding all the stuff, but why I think it's such an interesting device to do research on is because of the in the moment yeah. kind of uh, element. You ask people when they make a decision, when they uh, are in a, in a kind of trade-off situation, yeah. so you get much more honest re uh, responses. Uh, so I think uh, there, I, and that can be with uh, geolocation, that can be with adding pictures, but I think really getting behind the drivers of why people do certain things, mm -hmm. that's for me the value of mobile research. Having that said, one of the things that I'm actually missing in this uh, conference, and I think in, in many conferences, but uh, is there's a lot of vendors on stage. And we see a lot of examples, like the Nielsen case, like uh, uh, the Text Eagle mm -hmm. case, it's vendors who are telling us how they did it. We, we don't hear from the client side yeah. why they did it and what, it, what the added value for them was. And we can come up with ideas, but I want to hear from them what, what did the methodology bring them that they couldn't get mm -hmm. in them mm -hmm. any other way. There seems to be sort of a, an, an issue with a couple of speakers I think alluded to that. I get the feeling it is still sort of a, an, an idea that's more pushed by research agencies and clients are still need a lot of convincing that this is actually the right way to do that they can really get some additional valuable insights that conventional research can't give them that. Is, is there still that sort of imbalance, the enthusiasm on the research side and, and the skepticism on the client side? I actually find it the other way around. Yeah? So I find that it's the skepticism from the research agencies and it's more that the client um, are actually pushing research into this area. I think um, you know, clients under, you know, understand that you know, consumers are using their mobiles in a different way um, and whether you know, trying to understand how their consumers are using phones, you know, whether they should go, be going out and developing a mobile app or whether they should be having a, a mobile internet site that enables them to reach that wider audience. I think so it's very much, I think marketing directors realise that we're a little bit behind the curve on actually understanding consumers. And they need to understand how consumers are using their mobiles, you know, being able to understand when and where they're using their mobile. Um, so I think they're more pushing 
the researcher into this area rather than the researcher actually saying mm. to their client, this is what you know, this is what we should be getting into. Mm. I think the researchers are still very much risk averse and very, you know, protection, you know, protecting their methodology, uh, what they've been doing over the years. Yeah, but what I think uh, is easily forgotten that in well, fast forward two, three years from now, mobile isn't a separate methodology anymore. Because if you think tablets, uh, they haven't really passed uh, uh, today, but if you think tablets, it's a mobile hmm. device, yeah. and, but it's a different methodology. So it's, uh, it's something that researchers really have to think about. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be device agnostic mm. moving forward. But it's very different. Mobile is very different to any other methodology because obviously with online, you know, it has to be used in front of a PC with telephone interviewing. It's people calling. I think because there are so many different formats to mobile, yeah. I think that's where people's understanding, people's experience is not so vast because, you know, they've only probably, you know, dipped their toe into maybe SMS or into mobile web yeah. but not done other versions of, of yeah. mobile. So their understanding is a little bit clouded. Mm. Um, there was another issue that came up uh, briefly, and not so much actually in, in the forum, but this discussion that I had with people. Uh, and it really came largely out of the presentation from, from Nathan Eagle, uh, what he does in his business model in, uh, in emerging markets. Mm. There really seems to be with him, and he admits he is not a market researcher, a real blurring of the lines between marketing programs and market research programs. Yeah. And when I talk to some people, I think there is a real danger that really that the, the legislators in various countries, if those lines get too blurred, that we may just face more legislation again of what, what market research can or can't do. Is there, is there a danger that we'd be sort of moving into that a little bit here? I think the danger, if we're moving into that area, is because there's no set guidelines you know, for mobile. I don't know, I think Eastern Mile probably yes, my head. Yeah. they're developing their guidelines at the moment. Um, but obviously with the MRS, um, you know, you keep having to ask them, you know, can, you know, is this possible, mm. you know, how does this, how does this, what we're doing here to conflict with what you're doing, you know, and we're, I think we're told on a constant basis to follow online guidelines, but really that doesn't suit mobile, so I think that's maybe where the, the blurring mm. is, was actually happening, you know, and, and incentivization. They're trying to make incentives relevant to people taking part in surveys on their mobiles and maybe incentivizing them, you know, if they're in a Starbucks coffee shop, you know, with a, with a coffee for taking part in a survey. Now, under MRS, that's, that's a no-no. Yeah. Um, and they tell you to follow the, the actual uh, di uh, direct marketing rules. Mm. So, you know, it, there is a lot of cloudiness and a lot of, you know, uh, only big, uh, only big, um, you know, there's not really clear guidelines on what we can and can't do. Also because, as you mentioned before, mobile is not one methodology. Yeah. Mm. So a part of what uh, Dr. Yeah. Eagle is doing and part of what some of the other uh, vendors here are doing is, is partly surveying, partly behavioral, mm. which is, uh, uh, has yeah. different guidelines, to yeah. be honest. So the, pure guide, the new guidelines of, of SMR will only cover the survey part, probably not the, the, the behavioral part. So. It's, it, I don't think there's an easy solution moving forward. Uh, of course, we have to be good cops, uh, all of us. But I think that if you look at uh, um, the marketing side of the house, they have different rules. And uh, if you look at direct marketing, the, the whole objective is to learn as much as you can about yeah. the, uh, the individual. So, yeah, there's this mm. kind of friction. I don't think there will be an easy solution out there. I think we are self-policing, and I think conferences like this you know, probably draw out best practices yeah. and, you know, make sure that people are, you know, seeing, understanding what areas that people are getting into, you know, and the, and the kind of, you know, the, the clouded areas and, you know, trying to learn from that, yeah. really, and trying to take that into your own uh, projects that you conduct. So there is a lot of self-policing going on, I think, amongst those that are conducting my work. So. Yeah. But you only need one well, backup yes. to ruin it for the good. I know, <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, thank you.